Hi, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is uh, Bill Masoulis and I run the series that, that this screening is part of. The series is called Unknown Pleasures. Uh, I run it together with Chris Lusbury, who's over here too, but he's a bit, too, he's a bit shy to come up tonight. So, um, we, what we try and do is screen an Australian independent film that uh, is a little neglected, a little on the margins, a little experimental. Um, and, and Mark Larosa, the filmmaker, he's, 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 he's a little unknown, but not fully unknown. He's, I think he's just underappreciated in his 35-year um, career making films. Um, and this film was made just a couple of years ago. It's a very, very interesting film. Um, I really like it a lot. It's, it's one to really make you think and feel all these kind of different things. And, um, so we'll have a Q&A at the end with Jack Wilson um, from The Age, uh, who'll run the Q&A. And yeah, so I'll pass you over to Mark, who can just say a couple of words. Hello, everyone. Um, look, it's a big thrill for me to be screening my film here tonight in a cinema. Um, a big screen. Um, that's the way I sort of composed the shots in the film. So, you know, rather than people seeing it on a computer screen or television or a. Speak closer to the microphone. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, did you get any of that? Or? <laughs> yeah, um, no, it's a big thrill seeing on, on a big screen here and uh, much better than seeing it on a TV or a computer or something. So, and I'm happy that uh, it's a good turnout here and uh, that I've got the actors in the film here and the crew um, and some of the extras in the film as well. And uh, I've also got someone that uh, appears in the credits of most of my narrative films, uh, Mary Colley, who's my aunt, who uh, turned 90 just last week. Mm. Um, yeah, the film goes for about 70 minutes, and um, enjoy the picture. <laughs>
I did a lot of the breathing for the, <laughs> the um, painstaking work, and uh, that I hadn't done before either. Um, uh, I'm glad I had done it once, but I wouldn't do that again. Um, and uh, yeah, but, but, you know, when I was on location, if I turned around, you know, there was Mina, my assistant there. If I turned around, there was no one, <laughs> and that 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 put a lot of pressure on me um, to both photograph um, and direct. Um, you got to imagine, you know, there's just four people in one car going out there to make this film. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, and I had a very tight schedule. I remember driving up there uh, to uh, Broken Hill and looking across, and and Jordan had um, his iPad or whatever it was, and there was the schedule there, and I thought, is this going to happen or not, you know, it was just a lot of stuff that was meant to happen just in the first week, and uh, yeah, I was, I was pretty tense about that. Uh, when you're out there, you're just, um, you know, dependent on the weather, anything could have happened. I mean, I tried to make this film in 2.15, and I couldn't find a, a lead uh, male actor, so I tried to get in 2.16 and uh, then I looked back at the weather for 2.15 and the first week it was like, uh, you know, high 30s, 40, and I thought if, if we had done it then, uh, it would have been unbearable. Um, and it was such a tight schedule that, you know, if we missed a day or two, um, we would have been in trouble. And in fact, for a couple of days it did rain. Sorry, Jake, but yeah, um, it... it those were the extra pressures of not having a crew, but the, the length of it, um, yeah, three weeks was a long time uh, to be out there, but, uh, you know, I had done two weeks, so. So, being out there in this, um, as you say, quite unpredictable environment, when you look at the film, how far is it the film that you, you feel that you set out to make, the one you had in your head, say, in 2015, and how far is it something that also happened along the way that um, became a different film because of you know, conditions and things that um, came about. Uh, remarkably, it's very close to uh, what I had imagined. I had storyboarded the whole thing, and um, uh, when I got home, I, I compared it, or once I edited the film, I compared it to the storyboards, and it was very close. Um, yeah, there's always a few things you incorporated. You have to have an, um, be prepared for uh, differences and, and sometimes take advantage of what happens out there. For example, um, uh, Sumi uh, dropped her phone at some stage during the shoot and she's the one that suggested, you know, we could use that. And I thought, yeah, perfect. So you see the cracked screen, which follows a logic because she did fall down. Um, so that, that's the little accidents that happen that you incorporate into it. Uh, as far as the weather, um, it was mostly good. Um, it drizzled a bit on the first couple of days, and then we had uh, more serious rain uh, in the middle of the shoot, and uh, yeah, I was really, uh, I get really um, cranky when, when that happens, because um, I'm thinking, okay, now, now we're really losing time. Um, but, uh, once they opened the roads and we could get back out to the National Park, I um, just worked a bit more quickly and got it back on schedule. So it is very close to uh, what I had imagined. Yeah, I don't know how much you're going to want to say about what actually happens in the film, but um, I want to ask about two things that you, you said to me by email. One was that by design there are ambiguities, and the other was that in your view, there's no fantasy or hallucination in the film. Everything is um, really happening, which I guess brings in the idea of uh, parallel universes or time loops, almost some sort of science fiction kind of aspect. So I wonder how, how far you, you're willing to kind of enlarge on that. Well, I have been, I've been forced to uh, talk about uh, the meaning of the film because you know, even Bill has asked for a director well, statement. And you know, what could I say? I had to mention about, you know, quantum mechanics and all that stuff. Um, it's not really science fiction. I would say, uh, you know, the, the multiverse uh, idea is a um, hypothesis that is hard to prove, but um, if you ask scientists, physicists, some would say it's likely, 
some would say it's, it's possible and some would say it's just too convenient to explain uh, some of the stuff that we, that we know in the universe. But um, for creative people, for uh, authors and you know, filmmakers and, and, and people in television, you know, over decades it's provided a, a, you know, a lot of ideas for constructing a story. Um, but uh, even last week, I mean, I was here at this cinema to see uh, The Father and with Anthony Hopkins and uh, quite an effective film, but that two plays with reality. Uh, in that one, though, it's, um, we understand that it's part of the subjectivity of the central character. So we understand that even though moment to moment we don't know what's, what's exactly going on. But with mine, it's more ambiguous. Um, but yeah, you're right, as I said in that written interview, um, it's all meant to be objective. However, I did disguise it by having people dozing off or looking into space. So um, why did I do that? Uh, I guess to uh, leave it up to the audience to, to find to work out what's going on. You, you don't want to make these things too obvious. So um, I think that's why I, I did that. In my mind, I mean, it's also in some fashion a film about um, death, in a way. These characters are probably going to die, or what some version of them are going to die. And it's a, I mean, for want of a better word, it's kind of dealing with. Um, What's in the title? The the sublime, or the immeasurable, or the you know what's um, beyond um, understanding? Is that, and that is, I guess, also represented by the um, the landscape. Does that all seem reasonable to you? Am I thinking in the right direction? <laughs> uh, yeah, I wasn't sort of dwelling on death. I mean, it's the life death cycle. That's all there. I mean, I guess I was pointing to those larger universal cosmic sort of themes. Um, um, yeah, in a sense, it's it's sort of, uh, you know, with a standard narrative beginning and end, there's a, a definite thing that happens. With this one, it really doesn't matter if they live or die, because everything's happening. They're both living and dying, so, you know, um, yeah, that, so um, there is no end, it's always open. Um, I think one of the... The main differences from this film and other films is that uh, we often uh, veer away from the, the characters, the camera drifts off, and I, I'm trying to include the natural world um, and beyond, you know, into space, and to sort of decenter the characters, and, and that's not done, at least in commercial cinema. I mean, very rarely. There are films <coughs> like um, and I saw that picture outside of uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, that too takes a, a distant view of the main characters and it's more about a concept. And there are other films like, you know, last year at Miriam Bad, a French film made in the 50s that Bill mentioned, things like this. Um, that's what makes it I think, different from, from most commercial cinema. You mentioned the uh, the mobile phones, and obviously those are also cameras, and they can be used to create films or still images. And so, what what is and that's something that happens in other films that you've made that characters themselves are, are filming in one way or another. Um, so, what is the importance of that to you? It almost seems like the film it is another way in which the film kind of folds back on itself. Um. It's not something that I thought of. Um, why do they film? It's just what people do, you know. They have their cameras. Um, you know, I, I, I can't think of any other reason, like any other meaning behind that, any significance. Um, no. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, um, with the um, the actors, you mentioned that there was. A challenge in casting, especially the um, the leading man. And I just wondered, what were you looking for, and what was that challenge in in finding the right people? You know, I don't get a heap of people um, approaching me, or you know, it's hard to attract people to this sort of very uh, low or no budget sort of production. I tried to. I thought I was being clever and going around the 
acting agents and contacting act, uh, actors through social media. So that was a total failure. Um, so then my co-producer, who's ill tonight, she would have been here, but um, she's an actor, and, and as soon as she got involved uh, in my second attempt, I, um, we contacted all the agents, and before we knew it, we had 13 men uh, auditioning. Um, yeah, but it's not easy to get people or, or crew members. Um, uh, my question to them would be, uh, why, why did you get involved? Like, what did you have doubts about, you know, is this, is this kind of legitimate or, you know, is this a real film or, or what? You know, just four people travelling up in a car. It's a bit ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and um, do, do we want to get them out? Do we want to yeah. uh, ask them what they thought? <laughs> Mark, you want to introduce yourself? Um, this is uh, Sumi Lockner. Uh, that's uh, Jordan Fraser Trumbull. So, were there doubts in your mind? Were you wondering, <laughs> is this uh, a real film? Yes. <laughs> It was um, it was an unusual. Um, everything along the way was un well. The audition process was was pretty normal, and and um, there was a it was thorough from from memory and thorough. Um, but I guess the concept of like Mark said, the four of us heading out sort of into the unknown was somewhat unusual. It but was pretty wild. Yeah, it was pretty wild. <laughs> but although it fitted quite well, I thought, with the script and the whole concept of the film. Um, yeah, from the get out, from the get go. Did you want to add that? Well, yeah. So um, we did audition with quite a few people um, coming through. So Mike approached me. We talked about the script and stuff. And yeah, we, um, we auditioned. So it's been a while since I've talked to you. Um, and we auditioned quite a few people going through, and I was like, this guy. Mm -hmm. in, in, in. I literally was like, that guy's the best guy. Oh. Mm. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, it was like, we did audition quite a few people. Um, and then, yeah, it was quite a process going through, like, before we went away and filmed, like, we did a lot of work, like, just, just hanging out. Just hanging out, like, because we had to be husband and wife. Mm. So we did a lot of, like, walks and stuff. We got, yeah, we got, like, really hot walking on, I think, like, maybe the, the, what's the, the Mary, Mary Creek? I think we did a hot walk during Mary Creek. <laughs> Just, like, anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, how much, um, scope did you feel you had to define you guys who these some um, characters were because in a way there's um there's only so much that the um, the script would have given you i think about backstory and so on we did a lot of work on our own we kind of made it up a lot on our own i think because like it was quite so the script was quite bare um so we really worked in our personal life together like we kind of went oh we gave ourselves names and we yeah really worked on that quite hard to like give ourselves that life yeah because like for me the the, the script the script was like it was quite bare like it was very it was very beautiful but it was very bare like it was like you could, you could see it but we had to, we worked on it a lot to make it work as actors, which was great. Like, that, that gave us, like, complete freedom. So it was great. And I think, you know, I really felt once we got out there on this um, adventure, and I will call it an adventure, <laughs> it an adventure. with Mark, um, in this environment, and as you see, the environment almost is the lead character, and that's very intentional, and... Certainly for me, I think probably for Sumi as well, but that became very evident very early on um, 
and, and we really experienced that. We, I mean, we were often camping and staying out in these environments amongst the, na the very nature that we were filming um, in. And it, uh, for me, I found that the script made a whole lot more sense once yeah. we got out there. Yeah. And once it was also stripped back and it was hot and there were flies yeah, we and there were bugs <laughs> and there amazing. was <laughs> these rock pools that we were trying to discover and these beautiful rocks. And for me, the, the, that really, the whole script kind of fell into place once we actually got out in the yeah, environment. Yeah, it really made sense. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. just talking loudly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, did you have uh, a lot of questions for Mark about the script? And did he did he tend to answer them this time? <laughs> <laughs> yes. To the first question, and no to the second. <laughs> I think we just like when it was as we were saying, like when we were actually in the the out the outback, we actually just made sense of it then. Like there wasn't a lot we could prepare for in a way. Like we kind of just had to be there and. And so, like, asking you questions wasn't, it was kind of like, yeah, with the flies and the, and the bugs and the sand and uh, all the things. <laughs> so, it, yeah, it, I, I think kind of us being thrown into this situation and, like, such a small crew really actually made it work, like, really made it work quite well. So, <laughs> so there were not a lot of questions. It was just like, survive or die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I was just going to ask if you felt that working in a natural environment as opposed to, say, a theatre um, elevated your performance at all? Because I know that there's a American filmmaker from the 50s, Anthony Mann, who said that making westerns out, out there um, raise the level of performance. I don't know if that's true. But, yeah. I don't know, but like working in that environment, definitely, there wasn't a lot of, as I said, there's not a lot of thinking. Like you're just there. You're very present. Like that, and that's, I guess that's what we all aim for as actors, like to just be present in the moment. So doing that, I don't know. I just, just remember being like so annoyed by flies so many fucking flies and being so irritated and can't even remember what scene it is but I'm sure I saw something in there but I was like it just makes me irritated I didn't have to work that hard so like yeah maybe it does elevate your performance like yeah I don't know <laughs> yeah I, I think that it um certainly in these sort of this sort of environment you can't deny the, cir the circumstances that you are in and if you're shooting um in a studio in an artificial environment, or you're in a theatre where again it is artificial and you're having to recreate it, you can create the idea of what it is. Um, but something like this, especially in such a raw, harsh environment, um, yeah, I think absolutely it, it impacted. Whether it elevated, I'm not sure, but it's you couldn't deny it. Definitely, I would agree. Well, I think it's time to uh, throw it open to uh, questions from the audience and also comments, thoughts about the film. Um, should I pass the mic then? Does he shout out then? Project. Project, as Bill says. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> I can barely see the lights so bright from the projection booth. Shout, shout out. out. <laughs> Were there lots of snakes? <laughs> I just had this flashback of 
sitting down for the first time and it's on an ant's hill. <laughs> and sitting down and just feeling his ants <laughs> and just acting through it, focusing on the foot, so hard. And just and then cut and then jumping up and going, There is a lot of there's a lot of ant marks, a lot of ants in there. And then so but we've established the tree now, so we're gonna do it again, sorry. Um, yeah, so the, the creatures were definitely there. <laughs> Can I ask, where were you sleeping at night? <laughs> you can. Uh, <laughs> get buried. Uh, well, we were in the motel. Okay. We arrived at Nanjura the first night, and we were in a motel, and that's where we shot uh, the scene of Jordan getting up from bed. Um, then we were in a house for three days, I think, in Broken Hill. Um, then we were in the... Wutawindji National Park, and we, that's where we set up our own tents there, and we were there. That's where the ants were. Yeah, well, and, and, <laughs> ants everywhere. Um, we were there for four days, I think. Then back at Broken Hill in another house, which is a, a nicer house, a bigger house, very quiet. Um, and then we went back to Wutawindji, so I tried to break it up. I mean, eight days of camping at Wutawindji would have been too much. So, uh, yeah, two four-night stays there. <laughs> Then uh, we moved home and we stayed. We got back to the same motel, and uh, fortunately, they gave us the same two rooms uh, towards the end of the motel, two connecting rooms, and we filmed uh, the scene with Sumi and the, and the rocks. So every day, almost every day, we did something, and, and I purposely tried to vary where we we were to break up the three weeks. Um, you know, remembering that's just four of us uh, and not a lot of places to go. I remember Jordan went to see a movie at Broken Hill and we went touring a little bit on a day off, but uh, it's, it can get a bit sort of claustrophobic sometimes. Yeah. I've got a question. Um, it's about the, um, the parallel universe uh, structure of the film. Uh, there's, um, I, love, I love that idea where all the all the parallels are uh, real. Um, but I've got this question about the car. When the car is stolen or disappears, um, is that real? Or is that more surreal? Um, yeah, I think it just disappears into another <laughs> universe. Or, you know, another, oh, okay. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. another dimension or something that's just yep. abandoned. There. I mean, don't try and um, pursue <laughs> the logic. The well, no, I assume that it was uh, more a surreal, um, you know, uh, invention of some sort. The car just disappears and then reappears. Yeah, it's, it's but then when you were talking about each each thing being real, I was, I was thinking um, maybe I kind of misread that. Yeah, no, it, it disappears yeah. into another dimension or something. Yep. Um, and it's a funny thing because I was thinking, I mean, lots of people get lost out there and get into trouble, and they always advise you to stay with your vehicle. So um, I don't know what you do in that situation. Um, <laughs> um, they're in a real spot there. Um, and, you know, I actually thought about that quite a bit. You know, what do you do? Um, I certainly wouldn't go walking, uh, you know, yeah. attempting to walk 40 kilometers dressed like that without water. Yeah. <laughs> it was quite a, a, a fun component, an interesting component of, of this creation that Mark has um, built. So as actors, we go, okay, well, in the circumstances of this scenario, we walk away from the car. So if, the, if everything is happening is real for them, we walk away from the car, we come back to the car and it's gone. And I remember so trying to work out as the characters, so what's happened? Like, and even going, did, it, did we leave the, the handbrake off and it's rolled down the hill? Has someone robbed it? And it was actually a really cool, um, interesting contribution or aspect as actors to kind of be working out, who are those people? Far oh, out, they look like us. But the thing, did I imagine that? It was such. A, it was a really cool. Because, like, I guess from the outside, we look back, look at the, a film, at the film, and we go, okay, well, there are multiple things happening at any given moment. But as the actor in those circumstances, trying to live through that experience, 
it really added a really fun, um, interesting challenge and component of living in those circumstances as the actor and trying to work out what it is you're being uh, affronted with. Um, yeah, it was a really cool, cool aspect. Another funny thing is that I'm always anxious about my car being stolen. <laughs> <laughs> Even today, you know, I'm, I think I parked it too far down away from other shops and things. I don't know if it's going to be there. So that's a theme in my mind too. Uh, I've got a question. This might be the last one. Go ahead. Okay, oh. it's about the goats. That kind of when I saw the goats, I started thinking of uh, Burnwell's Exterminating Angel. And I was wondering if that film had an influence on you in writing the script. Um, yeah. And the goats were just there. There were lots of goats. They were there. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I do like that film. I'm trying to get a DVD copy of that film. But um, it, I, I wasn't thinking <coughs> of that for this, this film. Uh, the goats are there. They're all over the park. And uh, the idea with the ghosts is that um, assume his character um, hears them and knows that they'll have to go to water to find water at some stage, so she just follows them and so um, that was the idea of the ghosts. Yeah. One, one more. Bill. He, David wants to ask something about the car. Um, yeah, well, um, talking about how the car vanished. Um, one of those, one of the most interesting shots in the film for me is when we saw the shot of a tree. There's nothing there, just a tree. And then the cameraman is very slowly around the tree and reviews the car. And then it moves, very, moves through the car. Then it moves back around the tree again to reveal nothing but the tree. And you can see nothing but the tree. And if you were actually standing at that point, and with that space, and you were looking for the car, you wouldn't be able to see this. You wouldn't be able to see it because the tree has totally hidden it. And I can imagine that can actually happen in this environment. And that was one of the most um, otherworldly, otherworldly sort of things that the out back can do. It. And I found that was a masterpiece, that shot. Mm. Thanks, Dad. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I did that, uh, the casting crew had a, a day off, and I had to go out there on my own to uh, film the car, and, and no one could be there with me, of course, because the camera was rotating around the car. Um, yeah, I remember doing that. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I, I just really loved those couple of scenes of like ordinary life, like working the pub when they kind of meet, and, and family life. Can you just quickly talk about those things because they're so different Can to I the just, rest of the film. Just mention that in the pub, um, no one interacts with them, and that's something that I noticed after editing the film. It's as though they're ghosts. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's leave it there. But let's uh, thank uh, Mark Loretta and the stars. Of the